participants and discussing the questions of NICT May session. So this time the paper was more of integrated way of asking the questions, merging all the subjects together. So the same question can also be discussed in other subjects. Like for example, when I start going through the questions, you come to know. So the question, question number one, all of the following vaccines can be advised in elderly except. So it is regarding adult immunization. Rotavirus has no role in adults. Varicella can be advised when influenza vaccine important for travels. Diphtheria, depending on the age, nowadays even diphtheria vaccine can be given in adults. So the guidelines was adult immunization schedule. So what they have advised the vaccines like diphtheria and tetanus, human papilloma vaccine, varicella, zoster vaccines, MMR, influenza, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, and meningococcal vaccine. So adult vaccination schedule, again, a topic in medicine, general medicine, depending on the situation, depending on the condition, even adults can require vaccines. So this table, most of the times they are asking this question, adult vaccination, what are the vaccines to be used in adults? So the question was all except question. So the answer is rota virus. Again, when I give the PDF for you in the email depots, we will be uploading the same PDF. You can go through the schedule, but don't need to remember how many doses, etc. Just remember what are the vaccines given in adults. Question number two, the method of description of collection of data. So what you have, you have data with you. Based on that data, you are just describing the data. You are not inferencing anything out of that. That type of statistics is called as descriptive statistics. So there are two types of stats you should know overall. Descriptive and inferential stats. Descriptive stats is what the data you get first you organize then summarize, either you can use mean or median and summarize the data. Simplify and describe the data and present the data in terms of bar charts, pie charts, etc. But the next thing what you are doing after descriptive statistics, you are doing inferential statistics. What is the inference out of that? Like for example, if you take data from the sample, you generalize the data back to the population. What will be the external validity in the study? Or you compare the difference between two groups by using t-test, chi-square test, and you can tell the difference in the groups whether it is statistically significant or not. What is inferential statistics? That is the next thing after descriptive statistics. Description is just summarizing the data. The next thing what you do is inferential statistics where you use tests of significance or you can use population parameters. The data what you get from sample, whether it is generalized back to the reference population or not, you check the external validity also. So the question was very simple. Description of collecting the data, way of describing the data collected, the way of Describing the data collected is descriptive statistics. You are not inferencing anything. The word description was used. So the answer is descriptive statistics. All are true about rabies except related to rabies vaccine. Especially the last question of rabies immunoglobulins. So the question will be all are true regarding rabies immunoglobulin except. So not given after seven days. Of first dose, yes. If I am giving vaccine now, it should not be given after seven days. Within seven days of the first dose, if I am giving vaccine now, immunoglobulin has to be given within seven days. Don't give after that because it will alter the efficacy. Dose of human serum 20 international units per kg, correct. Equine serum is 40. In case if human immunoglobulin is not available, we have to use immunoglobulin human serums. In case if it is not available, equine can be used, yes, you can take it as correct. Because there is one more thing which is completely wrong. Maximum dose near the deltoid, no. As per the newer guidelines, 
the use of relief signal problem is neutralization it has to be given in and around the homes that is the main purpose option b is wrong and this was discussed in our classes also on these points was covered even relief signal problem in doors homes surroundings like that all of the following increases confidence interval except so you should know the formula of confidence interval then this question will become very easy for you so if i take the confidence interval for me like the data what we get from sample sample mean plus or minus twice the standard error so you calculate standard error like for example standard error of mean is standard deviation by root of sample size so standard error is inversely related to sample size so what will happen what will happen if sample size is increased standard error decreases if standard error decreases when i add plus or minus 2 into error the width of the confidence interval decreases the question is increase except means which will decrease confidence interval increase in sample size will decrease confidence interval come to the other options important decrease in sample size no if i decrease the sample size error will increase if error increases width will increase increase in confidence level if i take 95% confidence the multiplier is 2 if i take 99% confidence the multiplier is 2.6 the multiplier is 2.6 so that will increase the width of the confidence interval so increase in confidence if i make it 99 the multiplier is 2.6 that will increase the confidence interval increase in variability yes variability means standard error if error is increased width of the confidence interval increase so repeat odd man out in the question increase in sample size will reduce the width of the confidence interval so this was covered exact words what we discussed in the class increase in sample size will decrease the error and width of the confidence interval come to the next question important again the same question can be dealt in uh, microbiology also waste management what will you do if there is mercury spill like you are taking blood pressure spill go my meter my mistake if it is falling down what will you do if there is mercury spill so use your hand and discard not possible don't do that throw outside the environment don't no no just throw it and discard in dustbin that is not your duty so don't do all those things hands throwing in the environment or putting in the dustbin so these three options when looking at the option itself it is looking at this you can say there is something wrong in this using your hand no it's a waste hazardous waste don't do that throwing in the environment don't do never do that it is a hazardous waste grooming and discarding in the dustbin this is the easiest way but that is not the way to be done so what i say if i roll out the other options by using some common sense there is something left in the option a that can be done so even if you don't know the question collect using cardboard yes then put it in the bottle with water answer is correct first and foremost close all the doors switch off the fans put a caution board that it is hazardous mercury spill wear ppes so you are wearing gloves mask and goggles then take two stiff cardboard type of paper or used x-ray films you can collect the mercury waste you are just collecting the mercury waste when you collect the waste you can use the syringe or you can ask someone to use the syringe and just suck it and gather the mercury droplets put it in a plastic bottle with water just you are putting those mercury droplets seal it label that it is mercury waste so repeat the question was very easy just you are collecting using two piece two stiff piece of cardboard or x ray films you can use the syringe to suck the droplets and allow the droplets to go into a plastic bottle with water tight lid close it then label it so option a is the answer a brand says 500 mg paracetamol but actually had 200 mg paracetamol 
there is something wrong in the drug. So again, this question was discussed in your pharmacology. The answer is misbranded drugs. There is nothing called as unethical drug that was just filling an option. Either you have to choose adulterated, spurious, or misbranded. So answer is misbranded. Why not adulterated or spurious? Listen, spurious or adulterated drugs, they are synonyms. They are one and the same. So those are the drugs. Like for example, what will happen if spurious or adulterated drugs? Found to be having an adulterated product or something which is contaminated also or something which is totally replaced. Like if I am saying paracetamol in the name, in place of paracetamol, I am using something else, totally different drug. That is called as false drug or spurious or adulterated drugs. Like for example, I am labeling one drug like methamphetamine. But I'm using cocaine in place of that. Complete, total opposite. So the label what you're giving is totally different from what is the product in the drug. That is called as spurious or adulterated drugs. But the question is, if it is not labeled in a prescribed manner, there is something wrong in the label. Actually, 500 mg was labeled and 200 mg was in the drug. That type of Drugs are called as misbranded drugs or substandard drugs, not meeting the actual standards. Misbranded or substandard drugs. Virus which has endogenous transmission in India, answer is CCHF, premium Congo hemorrhagic fever. We have cases of CCHF in India, yes, we have cases, the initial was in Gujarat, then we had cases in Rajasthan. Now we had cases recently in UP. So there is endogenous circulation of this disease in the community. Gujarat, it was initially isolated. Then we had outbreaks in Rajasthan, those who worked with cattle. Arctic is the vector, biting them. They will get fever, rash, joint pains, premium Congo hemorrhagic fever. We had cases in UP also. I have taken this report from NCDC. So, and it was discussed in our classes also. Like I had covered this in your emerging infection, where we had cases of CCHF. Like you can see, uh, even the image also confirmed cases of CCHF in Gujarat, later spread into Rajasthan and UP. Why not Ebola is the answer? Because Ebola, we had a case in Delhi once, but that was not endogenous. That was from a traveler who came from another country, was tested positive. But if the question is endogenous transmission, Means where we have circulation of disease in our country, better to go for CCHF. We have cases in Gujarat, Rajasthan, and Uttar Pradesh. Vaccination one year old infant came for routine vaccination, took DPT first dose at six weeks. Okay, good. Now he is coming for the next visit. What is the next course of action? As we have discussed, DPT can be given till seven years. We have covered this in the class. DPT can be given till seven years. So what you will do, give DT, no, no need of DPT now, no, discontinue and restart the schedule, no, if the child comes for the second visit, no need to restart the schedule, give the second dose and continue the schedule. Actually the question was on DPT, fine, this was the question record, but nowadays anyhow we don't have DPT in the national schedule at 6 weeks, we have pentavalent. But still, what the question they have asked based on what we have to answer. You have to respect the question. And yes, the question was on DPT. So what we have to do, this was the question. So ruling out other option, answer is no need to restart. Give the second dose. When the child comes, then after a gap of four weeks, again you give them give the third dose. That was regarding DPT vaccine. As per National TB Elimination Program, which of the following is classified as high risk area? So the given question is like this. How many are HIV positives among TB patients? Based on the HIV prevalence in TB patients, the option was more than 10%, 15, 12, and 20. So this was the most difficult question in the paper because remembering numbers 
most of them when you read for entrance exams there are 19 subjects and 19 subjects there are so many numbers to be recorded but most of the times they will sneak in one or two numbers and that too when they are asking numbers they are asking the most difficult question this was the most difficult question to be honest I am telling this see this table the question was from this table categorization of high priority districts related to TB elimination category A based on TB case notification category B based on HIV TB prevalence category C based on drug resistance like that the question was when you can classify the area as high risk based on TB HIV prevalence more than 10 percent HIV prevalence in tuberculosis patients more than 10 percent HIV prevalence in tuberculosis patients I say if you have marked this question good very good but if you have not marked or if it is not able to recall nothing to it there are some questions which are totally difficult and there is no need to mark it correctly if possible try to avoid this question try to avoid negatives so come to this question very very tricky question based on the words what they are using Ram is 5 year old and Sham is 3 years old Sham had some fever with rash fine she thought that it was due to some allergy and she ignored 3 days later Ram developed fever and rash fine good mother got worried and taken him to primary health center so the first one Sham 3 year old is primary case correct the first case in the family the first case which was notified to the health system is Ram 5 year old index case so they are not using the word secondary case that is one more trick in the question what is primary case the first case in the family what is index case the first case which was notified to the health system so both are correct as per the definition now come to the keyword three days very good like for example Sham developed disease after three days Ram developed disease three days is the incubation period no chance three days cannot be incubation period of fever and rash if I take it as measles or if I take it as chicken pox measles has incubation period of 10 to 14 days chicken pox has incubation period of two weeks see this I am taking incubation period of measles from your textbook park it is saying 10 to 14 days 10 to 14 days not 3 days even if you think like this sir Sham had fever the period of communicability is 4 days before fever if the child was communicable 4 days before fine still if you add 4 plus 3 7 days that is not coming in the range of incubation period what my point that is not coming in the range of incubation period Ram got disease from sham no there is no interval there is no serial interval Ram is not the secondary case that is what I want to say Ram is not secondary case when you can say secondary case if we had got infection from the primary case and if he develops disease within the range of one incubation period then only we can use the word secondary case got my point good now you will ask sir how come they do develop disease in such a short period of time it can happen if they were exposed to common source if there is a measles outbreak in the system Ram and sham they can develop disease if the source was single point source exposure sham developed now ram can develop after three days yes they were exposed to a single source not that ram got infection from sham it is a measles outbreak not transmission within the family that is one more point which i want to say it is a measles outbreak not measles first case second case in the family it is a measles outbreak primary case and index case what is primary case the first case in the family
family. What is index case? The first case which was notified. Now the next option you will say, sir, post exposure prophylaxis could have prevented infection in RAM. So after exposure, you don't know when was the exposure, fine, but still after exposure, if I give vaccine within three days and immunoglobulin within six days, then only it can prevent post exposure prophylaxis is effective. But now, since the gap was just three days and they were not primary case and secondary case, even if I start prophylaxis in RAM, already he has almost about to manifest the symptoms because it is almost 11 days. Just three days left within the range it can develop. So even if I start post exposure prophylaxis, there is no effectiveness because it's about to manifest the symptoms. Now he was exposed to a common source. From the exposure to a common source, I don't know when is the source. From that point, if I have given vaccine within three days or immunoglobulin within six days, then it could be effective. Got my point. But now since it is not a secondary case. Even if you start giving post exposure prophylaxis, that will not prevent. So, that is the trick in the question. If the question was saying three days, this will be the answer. Got my point? If the question is telling three days, this will be the answer. And most of the students, they said, yes, sir, three days was mentioned. That is what we expect from INICT examiner. If the same question can be any other exam, if they give few days, then I don't know what is that few days. It can be 10 days, it can be 12 days. Then I could have marked everything was correct. A, B, C, D was correct. Now it is not few days. It is three days. Got my point? Even if I count period of communicability, I cannot say that Ram is a secondary case who got infection from Sham. Not possible. I am not having that much of confidence to say that. Clear? Only thing in this question which I can use is the definition. The first case in the family, primary case. The first case which was notified to the health system is index case. And even the examiner is not using the word secondary case. He is also a bit clever when he is framing the question. He is not using the word secondary case. Clear? Uh, if the infection was direct from sham, then I should use the word secondary case. I am not using that also. Clear cut, common source exposure. They were exposed to a source. It is a measles outbreak, not transmission within the family. It is measles outbreak and the source was common to both of them. And they developed disease like sham first, then ram. Even if I say post exposure prophylaxis to RAM could have prevented the infection, I don't think so because the exposure was common source. Long before he would have given vaccine or immunoglobulins, by then it could have prevented, not after SHAM, you would have come to hospital and RAM could have taken prophylaxis. No, that is not the answer. Clear? So does a time extra I took for this question because a bit trickier. The question has that keyword three days. Some students say, sir, few days was mentioned. If few days was mentioned, then anything can be the answer. Few days means what? One, two, three, four can be the answer. But most of the students, they said, sir, three days. So that is the trick in that question. Keeping and thinking like this, my answer is one comma two. Even I discussed this with other difficulties also. My colleagues and they said the same thing, sir, if three days was mentioned, yes, it was mentioned and this can be the answer, sir. Okay, good. And you are open for discussion, you are open for discussion, but a very good question, very, very good question. My answer is one and two. You can see our answer is one and two from all sides, from all the difficulties what I have discussed. Very good question. Come to the next question, easy. Treatment of choice for a patient with RK39 positive report. RK39 is rapid diagnostic kit for detecting Kalazar. If the report is positive, you can start treatment. You can start treatment by using amphotericin B. And this was covered in our classes under uh, Dr. Bond disease control program. 
What if the patient is called other suspect like fever, anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, not responding to treatment, not responding to anti malarial lesion? The patient will come with fever, anemia, hepatosplenomegaly, not responding to anti malarial. Such patients we have to rule out Kalaza. If you are a medical officer, primary health center, you can use rapid diagnostic kit RK39. If it is positive, no need to confirm by using bone marrow biopsies. You can start treatment by using single dose liposomal aphrodensin infusion, as you can see here, what we have discussed in the classes. So, sodium stipogluconate, those were the drugs used before, but as of now in India and in the Indian subcontinent, liposomal amphotericin is the drug of choice for Kalazar elimination. Identify the toxicant based on the image shown below. And this image can be dealt in forensic also. This almost looks like mustard, Arjimon Mexicana. So, the adulterant, what is added to mustard, Arjimon oil to mustard leading to epidemic dropsy epidemic dropsy the images what was included in your discussion sheet of regular batches and even have covered this in the class epidemic dropsy and the image same toxic and image can also be discussed in your forensic come to the next question so the next two questions usually dealt in pediatrics and even medicine so it's an overlap between two subjects what should be done ideally for a child born by a child positive mother who is on DRT means child is exposed. So the newer guidelines what they say is depending on the risk status of the infant, low risk and high risk. Low risk infants means born to mothers with proper viral suppression by using their drugs, but that is not mentioned in the question. Fine. High risk infant means Mother is not on ERT, mother is not on ERT, and there is not proper viral suppression. So, what you will choose? What you will choose in this question if the mother is already on ERT, and what should be done ideally? What should be done ideally? So, what if the infant is low risk, you can use nevirapine for six weeks. You can use nevirapine for six weeks. And zidovidin can be used if nevirapine is not effective or in situations where nevirapine is not useful, zidovidin can be used. The duration is 6 weeks. First let me say the guidelines then come back to the question. High risk infant, both nevirapine plus zidovidin will be used. If the feeding was replacement feeding, 6 weeks is enough. If the feeding was breastfeeding, 12 weeks has to be given. But here, low risk infant, nevirapine for 6 weeks. High risk infant, both nevirapine and zidovidin, but depending on the type of feeding. Replacement feeding, 6 weeks. Breastfeeding, then we need 12 weeks of prophylaxis. This is the guideline. But the question says, what should be done for a child Born to HIV positive mother on ERT, what should be done ideally? What should be done ideally? So, based on the option, if the child is HIV positive, then there is no role of nevirapine. Nevirapine has role when you are not sure whether the child is HIV positive or not. You are using it for prophylaxis. Option D says no need of nevirapine. No nevirapine has to be given. So, by ruling out other options, formula of feeding, if the setting is fine, high resource settings, the ideal way is formula of feeding. If it is feasible and if it is in high resource settings, formula of feeding is ideal and use nevirapine irrespective of HIV status because nevirapine is for prophylaxis. What option E and B says, if it is HIV positive, Nevirapine has no role because nevirapine is used only for prophylaxis. Option D ruled out. Option C comparatively it is correct. Based on the recall what we got, there can be a question which can be recalled in a different way also. So I have discussed the same question with our pediatric faculty also. And ruling out other options, option C seems to be correct. 
So, but from your side, better if you know the guideline. Low risk infant, nevirapine for six weeks. High risk infant, nevirapine plus zidovidin. The duration depends on the type of feeding. Replacement feeding, six weeks is enough. Breast feeding, 12 weeks has to be enough. So, what you have to take from this question? Better if you know the newer guidelines, that is enough. Come to the next question. Again, a medicine related question. Which of the following is true regarding prophylaxis in HIV when we have to start prophylaxis? So, I'm discussing regarding three things PCP, cryptococcal, and there is a VCAVM complex prophylaxis. So, first, PCP, pneumocystis carinae, pneumonia, you can use cotrimaxazole. When to start? CD4 count less than 350. CD4 count less than 350. Remember this. When to stop? If you have CD4 count more than 350 on two occasions, then six months apart. When you are starting, 350 less than 350. When you are stopping, more than 350 on two occasions, when you are doing six months apart. First point Cryptococcal disease, when we have to start prophylaxis. If the CD4 count is less than 100, just not all the points, don't need to read everything. The CD4 count is less than 100, start cryptococcal prophylaxis. AVM complex site NAC if the CD4 count is less than 50. Less than 50. Now come back to the question. CD4 count more than 350 on two occasions, six months apart, discontinue. PCP prophylaxis correct. Discontinue PCP prophylaxis correct. CD4 count less than 50 give MAC prophylaxis correct. CD4 count less than 150 start cryptococcal prophylaxis. No, if it is less than 100, not less than 150. CD4 count less than 200 start PCP prophylaxis. No, CD4 count less than 350. So note down this table less than 350. You have to start PCP prophylaxis. Less than 100 cryptococcal prophylaxis, less than 50 MAC prophylaxis. And come to one more, the last question in our subject. You can take it as last question. India is a diverse country with various culture and language. What measure will you do for effective patient doctor communication? Any other topic? Most of the undergraduate syllabus, they are added this AT, COM, attitude, ethic, communication related questions. But which is true, that is the question. Doctor must give importance on communication. is yes, very important. Communication skills are important. Let communication be handled by interpreter or translator. This is a trick in the question. It can be correct or not. But still, I will take it as correct. When you come across the documents, they say if the, there is language barrier, if there is language barrier, better to use a translator so that it will be easy for both the patient and the doctor. If you want, if you ask me, sir, what will you mark and mark it as correct. Doctor must understand the cultural pattern, 100% correct. You have to respect the culture and cultural pattern. Doctor should treat the patient regardless of the patient's perception. No. Why I am marking this as wrong? Because, say this, I have taken the reference from WHO communication modules. The first Doctor has to respond to the patient and their families at both emotional, cultural and intellectual levels. So based on that cultural pattern you have to understand and you have to give respect correct. Communication skills, emphasis, importance that is always correct. Using an interpreter, yes you can take it as correct. Why I am telling option D as wrong because the doctor needs to understand the patient's perception and needs. See what is mentioned in this line. The doctor needs to understand the patient's perception and needs. If I say doctor should treat the patient regardless of the patient perception, I can take it as wrong. But still, this type of questions, most of the students will not mark this. It was not that easy. I am telling always, INICT exams, most of the times they will ask moderate to tough level of questions when the question is tough it will be very very tough for everyone three four questions what i have discussed was at the tougher level if i am asking if i am telling this to you three to four questions are of very very high level 
and it is on the tougher side also. But balancing out the other questions and getting the correct answer in the other questions is the game here. So few more questions which can overlap with other subjects like a question on leprosy. A patient with single hypopigmented hypoesthetic plaque with thick and nerve. So if it is one patch with one thick and nerve, we classify the patient as vasillary leprosy. So now we don't use green packs for management. Whatever we are using is red packs. So the duration is 6 months for vasillary leprosy, 12 months for multivasillary leprosy. So if they ask what is used, so if I label red packet as packet B, for 6 months. You are not using green packs. We have discussed this in the classes under program, leprosy elimination program. So what we are using? We are using red packs only. See here I have discussed this question. So we are using only red packs. The duration 6 months for POSI, 12 months for multivasillary leprosy. So the question was on POSI vasillary it is for 6 months. So the same slide I am showing again what I have discussed in the classes for you. The patient day 1 will get rifampicin 600 mg, clofazamine 300 mg that is once a month. For the remaining days the patient will get clofazamine 50 mg and dapson every day. So this is red pack. 6 months of treatment for post leprosy. 12 months of treatment for multivasillary leprosy. So, how many packs for POSI? 6 packs we need. How many packs for multi? 12 packs. So, the drugs and dosage is same. The only thing different is duration. I repeat, day 1 RCD for the remaining days C, D. You can remember like this. So, there was one more question on leprosy chemoprophylaxis in contacts. So we are supposed to give single dose rifampicin chemoprophylaxis that is taken as post exposure prophylaxis. In which conditions we are giving this? So age more than 2 years, correct. Living with patient for more than 6 months, no, for more than 3 months. Close contact for more than 20 hours per week, correct. And sharing clothes and towels because it is contagious. So. The inclusion criteria you should know. A person who has been living, working or having social activities for more than 3 months. Remember the duration, more than 3 months. And with close contact of 20 hours per week, that was correct. With a newly detected case of leprosy in the last one year. Start single dose Rifampicin prophylaxis in age more than 2 years only. So exclusion criteria, pregnancy, remember that. There are other exclusion criteria like patient was receiving rifampicin for any reason in the last 2 years or patient with history of liver disorders. Patient who is having possible signs and symptoms of leprosy, obviously will start leprosy treatment by rolling out leprosy. And patient with acute febrile illness. The question was not on exclusion criteria, the question was on inclusion criteria, but in the future they can ask exclusion criteria like pregnant is an exclusion, correct answer. So repeat, it should be more than 2, correct, 3 months should be the answer, not 6, 20 hours per week, correct, and sharing clothes and towels. The last question, again it can merge with the pathology, transfusion, before blood transfusion, what we screen for in India, all except was the question. We don't screen for dengue in India, I am telling. Other countries, the guidelines can change. So, we are screening for transfusion transmissible infections. We call it as TTI. Transfusion transmissible infections, HIV, hepatitis B, malaria, and even hepatitis C. That is one more thing what we are screening for. So, HIV, hepatitis B, malaria, and hepatitis C. We don't screen for dengue. So overall the questions was a bit more clinical this time and some more clinical questions was asked which can merge in medicine like a question on hepatitis B serology and a question on diabetes management. Some questions with gynae like SAGE protocol for HPV vaccines 
and even HPV manifestations that was discussed in your gynae. And uh, two more things in microbiology, like one was on airborne isolation for CJD, and one more what is the difference, like what is infectant and what is sanitizer, like that was also a question discussed in microbiology. So, most of the time it is overlapping with other subjects. Good. So, finally, what I want to say based on the response of other students, the exam was mostly on a tougher side comparatively to previous exams. So, those who have done good, it's better you have done very well, all the best, best wishes. But those who could not assess themselves, who feels the question was a bit on the tougher side when related to or checking all the subjects all together. So, then don't get disheartened now. Most of the times in the NEET exams, question will be a bit easier compared to Central Institute exams. You know that you are in this field, you are preparing this. So, always have that confidence. Don't get disheartened by any failures. Failures are always a part of a journey. Believe in the process. Always keep believing in what you know and what you have revised. So, just focus on the next NEET exams. Go with a calm, relaxing mind. So, don't take too much of undue pressure. Whatever you know, you will recall it properly in the exams. Just try to keep it as simple as possible. Focus more on revision. Revise things what you know again and again. That will help in the exam. So, finally, good. Any Thing you want to add in this or any correction in the options if you want to make we have tried our best to get the best recall as much as possible if you want to add some options in any of the questions you can inbox us always open for discussion fine good again take care thank you so much